here's a question. Yeah. We're always asking people low kick versus low kick, mid kick versus mid kick, hybrid, etc. Do you think that really matters anymore? Because what I'm seeing in the comments is people don't seem to care. They just want to see a top end stick versus another top end stick. And it kind of feels like the whole thing about kick point is, is kind of not fading, but it doesn't seem as important because... No, I, I completely agree. I don't think um, kick point is making much of a difference, especially um, mid kick or hybrid kick versus low kick. I think the mid kick and the hybrid kicks are definitely getting much better at that quick release, which normally is in the low kick sticks. For instance, we've got, you know, the QR6 Pro here, the Trigger 9 Pro here that we're going to put against the Tracer and let you know which one's better. But obviously, we've got a mid kick and obviously we're putting them against the low kick. So, you know, and we're going to let you know which one's better out of the two. I think, I think you're right. I think kick points is, is fading away. I think it's more colour and name. Yeah, and performance because, you know, I don't think players are like, oh, I'm a D-man, so I need to get a high kick or a mid kick or, or a hybrid. It kind of just seems no. like different sticks, although they're targeted at different shot types, they have, they can perform as well, depending on the stick, in any aspect of a shot than you would perhaps think it's supposed to, if that makes sense. If, if I'm going to be honest, I think that's why most high kick sticks are gone because hybrid, mid and low, you can get everything from all of them. You know, you don't need a high kick point stick to get that power shot because you can get it from these these hybrids, these mids and these low kick point sticks. But we've gone a little bit off track here. Yeah, a little bit. We've we gone guess. a little bit off track, but that's fine because, you know, this is a stick video. We like to waffle. We do like to waffle. So we're going to move on. Obviously, like I said, standout feature is definitely the release and the worry is whether it's going to be like every other bower and go soft or break. So Chris, I'm going to let you pick. What comes next? What comes next? What stick would you like me to put against the Tracer first? Ooh, I'm going to say, let's go with the Trigger 9 Pro from CCM. The Trigger 9 Pro. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so like the Tracer, what we're going to do is we're going to do the standout features, what I'm worried about, and then which compare them against each other, and then tell you which one's better and which one I would pay for if I had to. So I can't remember the last time you had to buy a stick, but okay. Neither do I, thank God for that. If I, if I had to buy one, you joker. <laughs> if I had to buy one for you. Good life, eh? It's nice. Eh? <laughs> Sorry. It nice. <laughs> We're getting sidetracked, Chris, stop. Okay, so definitely, as always, it's a rib core. A standout feature is definitely the release and the grip. The grip on this stick is a joke. It's like you've got super glue on your hand. Me and Chris were looking at them all before and we, we just couldn't believe it. It, it. The grip is really nice. And to be honest, I don't think it's got anything to do with the ribbed. I think it's just a nice grip. It's really sticky. Your glove's definitely not gonna fall out and slip on these sticks. What I'm worried about, I mean, I'm not very worried about anything. You know, the, the rib core has always been a, a very trusty stick for me. You know, I've had them from the Trigger 3 Pro all the way up to the, now the Trigger 9 Pro. And I've used all of them. I've always loved the rib core sticks. No worries about durability with the rib core? No. I've had so many rib cores and I've broke so few of them. I think the last rib core I broke was the Trigger 5. Fair. So, you know, it's been a while. What, um, what features does the stick not excel at? Like what type of shots? You know, it's a low kick. You can still get a nice slap shot off and a nice quick um, wrist shot off and a snap shot. But... If we're going to go on to comparing the two, the Tracer and the Trigger 9, it pains me to say it, but there's there's nothing that the Trigger 9 beats the Tracer at. The Tracer has a much better release. The only th Sorry, let me change that. The only thing the Trigger 9 Pro has better than the Tracer is grip. The Trigger 9 Pro has a great grip. Like I mentioned, the grip is just insane on this stick. But other than that, it doesn't beat it. The release is much better on the Tracer. I can definitely slap shot and get a one-timer off better with this stick. But like I've always said, I don't take many of those in games anyway. But snap shots, wrist shots, backhands, I just, I think you can tell from the footage we took with the Tracer, I think that's the best I've ever shot while filming yeah, on a sure. stick. Most consistent shooting as well. Absolutely, I think I'm missing that like once. Where are we going, same one? Auto aim, yeah, let's see what it's got. 
I think of the left one, I'll never, I'll never discredit anything you ever say about a stick. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's. And it's I think mad. I nearly fell over. That's why. Yeah. You know, it was, it was just the trigger nine didn't beat it, unfortunately. So if I then had to go to a shop and I had to buy one, or someone asked me at that moment which one would I get, I would definitely be getting the tracer. At this moment in time, purely for the fact of, you know, it's still going strong, it hasn't gone soft, it hasn't broke. Maybe that will change. We'll do an updated version in a couple of months Three and months let later, you know. For sure. Next one. I'll let you pick. Okay, so from there, let's go QR6 Pro. I think that's the one that people really QR6 want to see as well. QR6 Pro, let me put this one over here. QR6 Pro. It's a lovely stick, you know. Like always, I'm gonna mention the kick point. Tracer, mid. This is a low kick point stick, just like the Trigger 9 Pro. So it's got a great release, you know, everyone that has been watching the videos these past couple of months, I really, really like this stick. You know, I think not only does it perform well, it looks really nice too, which we didn't touch on the other two sticks, but I've got to because I think the design on this one actually beats both of them. I, I don't like the design of the new Trigger 9 Pro. I preferred the design of the Trigger 8 Pro. Yes, I 100% agree. Yeah. 100% uh, agree, which is odd because we normally don't agree on looks on sticks. No, we don't. But I think the Warrior QR6 Pro just has a, has a nice design about it, you know? Main performance benefits. Definitely the release. You know, it's a low kick point. Release, amazing. But I do also think you can get a really nice slap shot off with this stick. Nice. Um, which is always handy, you know, like I said, I don't take many slap shots, but if I have to, it's always nice to have a stick you can trust to get a good one off. What um, didn't the, the, the stick perform too well at? I'm yet to find out, you know, I think the grip isn't as good as I thought. Okay, so if you're, so you're, that's in the same category as the Tracer then. You're yet to find out what it's not good at. So yes. where does it sit against the Tracer? See, this is where a lot of people are going to be shocked. The mid kick point stick in the Tracer beats the QR6, which is a low point in release. Jeez. The release is just so clean with this stick. It actually shocked me, to be honest. But like I said, I can get a great slap shot off with this stick, but I think they just come off more cleaner with the Tracer. Okay, so right now the Tracer is 2-0. Two 2-0 nothing. Two nil Tracer, which is shocking. Because obviously these two sticks that I've reviewed against the Tracer were my top two sticks, the ones that were in the change room that I was going to use this season playing for the Raiders. And I've got the Tracer and they've both just been put in a back seat. Okay, so now how does it rank to the next guy? You pick. What's what's closest to you, Proto? Proto R is closest to me. Okay, grab it. How does it sit? Well, the standout features this and where does it sit? Everyone that's watched the Proto R video, which was a couple of months ago, I really, really like this stick, you know? It was like the Tracer, great release, great feel. Just blade went soft. Basically. The one thing I'm worried about with the Tracer happened with the Proto R, which is why I'm worried about it happening. It went soft. And I think you could see that in the videos that we've featured it in recently. Shots were just sort of hit and miss. And that weren't actually me. <laughs> the, the blade went soft, so you're not sure whether the puck's going to come off clean and fast or whether you're just going to muffin it along the floor. So what were the standout features of the, tra of the uh, Proto R? Definitely the release, you know, which is shocking because I, I believe this is mid, it's not an all. Yeah, so... Bauer are doing a lot with their mid kick point sticks that they're giving it that great release. Aside from the blade going soft, what did the stick not excel at, the Proto R? I think, yet again, it was good at almost everything. And I was, I was, I was using it, training, playing. Just the blade went soft. And then it went soft and what, what do you want to stick for? You're not sure whether it's going to give you everything or nothing, you know? So well, I guess that means that again, the tracer, tracer wins. comes out on top because, Jeez. I mean, the Tracer hasn't gone soft, but it's not showing any signs. I mean, they don't normally, it normally just happens. But like I said, we will do an updated version in three months time and let you know whether it has or whether it's still going, whether it's in two, <laughs> who knows. But for the minute, the Tracer is three nil. Okay, what's next then? The next one next to me is Bowers Hyperlight 2. Okay. <sighs> okay. Let me, let me see if I can do this one for you. Go ahead. It's a shooter stick. It takes a while for you to be able to adjust to the way that the stick feels and performs. But realistically, what it was good at was just shooting. It had terrible feel for the puck. 
and that means that it falls below pretty much all of the sticks that you've just looked at, including the tracer. Yes. So <laughs> basically, and this is, I've spoken to people in my team that are using this stick this year. Yeah. They have all said the same thing. You have to find the sweet spot. Mm. If you don't find the sweet spot, you're not hitting the net. And the other sticks just don't have that? No, and certainly not the tracer anyway. You know, the tracer I got on the ice and straight away I was, I was picking corners with it. Um, once you find that sweet spot though, it's a great stick to shoot with. But you just don't want to dedicate that time to finding it. No, you, you, you have on. to spend at, at least a week or two in training, just shooting a lot of pucks, as many pucks as you can. But when you find that sweet spot, you'll know about it because you'll be like, oh, got you. that come off really nice. And a lot, a lot of people in my team at the moment have agreed with me on that and all. A lot of them have said, yeah, I haven't found that sweet spot yet. Fair. So that makes it 4 nothing. 4 nothing Tracer. Jeez. Tracer's doing well. All right, ne who's next? The FT Ghost. I like the FT Ghost. Everyone knows that. Um, it's a great stick. It's a trusty stick. But I think it was one of them sticks... The standout feature is hard to put on it because it was just okay at everything. Yeah. You know? Backhands, wrist shots, one tees, slap shots. It was okay. There was nothing I can go, it's great for that. You know, it's just, it's okay for everything, which isn't, isn't a bad thing to have in a stick. All round balanced stick. Yes. I think it's probably the most balanced stick CCM has ever released. Okay. It's very trusty. You can always rely on it. But then again, when it comes to fitting my style of play, I want that quick release. I want that release to be that standout feature. Yeah. And therefore, the tracer is, has come out on top again because the release is just so clean on this stick. I don't have to go, well, it might be okay, it might not, because the release is okay. The release is insane, you know? So the tracer is still undefeated. Okay, what, <laughs> what is next, FT7 Pro? Well, no, I've actually got the Catalyst 9X3 from True. Okay, standout features of that stick. I think this stick is a very similar to uh, a Bauer stick. You know, it's okay at everything, but the durability is not great. Okay. You know, I, I've had a lot of teammates, a lot of people that play hockey here at Romford come over and go, what's going on? My Trues are breaking. Mm. But if the durability is not there, it makes it difficult. I will mention, we've not mentioned this in videos, we'll be looking at their new sticks and of course, they've actually moved factories, yep. which is gonna have a massive impact on the consistency and the durability of their sticks. But we will address that in a separate video. I know this is gonna be a popular video, so yep. I wanted to mention that. Yeah, I, we are yet to receive one from their new factory. I've had this one quite a while. Yeah, so um, stand by for that one. Yeah, I gave it a fair shot. I used it for maybe a month or two, but when it just compared to all the other ones there, it just um, it just can't keep up, unfortunately. Okay. So Tracer again. Tracer again. All right, last one. See if it can be dethroned. FT7 Pro. Standout features of this bad boy. I think it's like the FT Ghost, you know? It's a very trusty stick. It's okay at everything. You said the FT Ghost was like a cleaner version of the FT7 Pro. Them two are very close, the FT Ghost and the FT7 Pro. I think I think CCM done a little bit of a cheeky one and released the FT, FT Ghost as like a, a teaser trial ah, for so the I've FT7 got the Pro. Around. I've got it the other way around, got you. And then when people were giving reviews on the FT Ghost saying, I like this, I don't like that, they tweaked a few things, put the things that the people liked from the FT Ghost in the FT7 Pro and so, then dropped the FT7 Pro. Got you, got you. So I know, I know you like that stick. The FT7? Hybrid kick point? I, I did like this stick. I really like this stick. But I don't think the release was the standout point. What was it then? I think it was the feel for the puck. You got great feel for this. But, uh, this I do recall you saying that in the review. Yeah, uh, you got great feel for the puck on this stick. Cool. Um, which is always handy. But like I said, with my style of play, I want that quick release. That quick release is so big nowadays, which is like we mentioned earlier on in the video, why most high kick point sticks are, are faded, if not faded, gone already. Mm -hmm. Because every single player wants that quick release because the game is just so fast. I think I'll also add, bear in mind what we've said about the other sticks, guys. So if those features that we've mentioned that don't work for Tommy actually stand out for you, the order that you rank these sticks in could be completely different. Yes, this is for me, how I play, and how I would want my stick to perform for me. Perfect. Um, 
But saying that, the tracer's still undefeated because the, the release, like I said, the release is the best release I've felt on a stick so far this year. Jeez. Which is, which is saying something. So fair play bar, credit when credit's due, you've made a hell of a stick. If it doesn't go soft or breaks, like all your rough ones. <laughs>